Welcome to this CNI project briefing toward automation, uh, automating collection of article data and repository content. I'm Stephen Pryor, Digital Scholarship Librarian at University of Missouri, and I'll be describing what you might infer from the title is a an in progress project that we are developing to, to head toward automating collection of information about what our authors are publishing where they're publishing, how they're publishing it, and getting that, getting those publications into our institutional repository or uh, some kind of open access um, availability. And so we, we have a few things that we wanna accomplish with different phases of this project, including analyzing and visualizing our author and publication activities to help us in our internal decision making as well as external communications with uh, provosts and board of trustees and other entities on campus and within our multi-campus system. Uh, we also just want to contact and, and maintain relationships with our faculty authors. And we eventually evolved to this sort of document retrieval process that we'll see later. And so our process right now sort of works like this. Uh, we have some raw data. We read that data, combine it with a few different sources. Uh, we send the emails to authors. We download articles and create metadata and batch files for DSpace. So I, um, a lot of these steps, as you'll see, involve uh, Python and various APIs. So I have a set of Jupyter Notebooks, and there's a GitHub link at the end of this presentation for the Jupyter Notebooks that we'll be exploring. So you can um, look at those yourself and sort of see what is occurring in each of these steps. And so our first step, though, is to download raw data, which I am currently retrieving from Scopus. And as you may know, with Scopus, you can search for uh, by affiliation. And so we can search by University of Missouri, and we have a couple of random uh, ones that still exist that I also uh, check on from time to time. But generally, we can search for, in our case, University of Missouri, and we get a list of uh, articles published by University of Missouri. And I can narrow it down by year, by author name, I, or, and I can do other sorts of advanced search and limiting by open access availability, for example, or things like that. Uh, and then I can export this data set with a certain amount of citation information about uh, what kind of document, the DOI, uh, when was it published, who are the authors, and things like that. Uh, I also get the correspondence address, uh, affiliations, and publisher, and some other uh, metadata. And I export that as a CSV. And then at that point, I go to my first Jupyter Notebook, which uh, helps me get additional uh, article data about this article. And so I read in my Scopus data, which has all that other information. And what I want to do then is uh, define a function to get data from Unpaywall, which will tell me Unpaywall is a database that uh, has information. If I give it a DOI, it will tell me whether an article is available within an open access copy or not. And if it is, where is that copy? What version of the document it is? Um, and things like that. So that is what this function does. Um, and I can uh, call my function with the list of DOIs from my Scopus data, data frame. And then I can combine the unpaywall data frame with the Scopus data frame on the fields that I want. So best open access license, publishing date, OA status, best OA URL, and things like that. And so after I have uh, combined that unpaywall data with the Scopus data, I, there's one other field that I wanted to add to this data set. And so I uh, took a look and, and built a list of what the, the top publishers that cover probably 90 to 95% of the, the publications uh, in, our, in the list. 
And uh, I, I went to this list of publishers and I looked for whether they have a general green open access policy that allows authors to deposit their uh, post peer review manuscript version, their author accepted manuscript. And if the publisher has such a policy, I've I added it to this list and built a list of these uh, green OA publishers. And what I do is, at this step is go through the list and uh, make a, a note for each article, whether the publisher um, is a green OA publisher or the thing is already available open access uh, in, in a gold open access or the journal is open access. Uh, and then I uh, basically create this field that's a flag as to whether it's a potential OA or not. And so the reason that I do this is because um, I might want to generate a chart describing uh, that 40% uh, of our items are currently open access, but if everybody who could deposit a manuscript would deposit a manuscript, we could have 90% of our uh, content available open access, for example. And so adding this flag allows me to, to have that data set of if we added all of these green OA possibilities, uh, you know, this is what our potential could be. Uh, and then I save out a new CSV with all my new data. And uh, I move on to the next step, which is to take this Scopus Plus on paywall data. And um, I want to add even more information to it. So I uh, use my uh, Python and Jupyter Notebook with the Unpaywall API to combine that data. And then I want to get uh, contact information, names, and departments where I can for the authors. Uh, for the next step in uh, adding data to our uh, data set. So at this point, I um, move on to the next phase, which I have uh, broken out into uh, a separate uh, Jupyter Notebook. I read in my CSV of article data, uh, and then I, I set up an LDAP connection uh, because Scopus gives us, in the Scopus data set, it'll give us, for the corresponding author at least, it gives us their name, email address, and department information, but that is basically whatever department information they've provided uh, with the publication. And so it's not standardized and it's all over the place. And so what I wanted to do was as much as possible, uh, gather this as a standardized list. And so I'm looking it up against our campus directory at this point. And so uh, I set up an LDAP connection, connect to our LDAP server. And, and then uh, again, I, I iterate through the article data and for each row, I parse the corresponding address, the correspondence address. So uh, right away I can get for the corresponding authors, if they are MU, if they are University of Missouri authors, uh, I can match them up with an entry in the directory and pull their uh, title, their uh, department, uh, their uh, actual, their, their official name. Um, and so I'm doing this match on a email address, which is uh, a pretty good unique key that's available in the Scopus data. And so as, when I talk about improvements a little bit later, uh, obviously this right now is just And so later in the presentation, when I talk about improvements that, uh, to be made to this process, uh, obviously the, the major caveat here is that this is only retrieving data for the corresponding authors because that's who I have the email addresses for. Uh, I, I figured at this point, the, the corresponding author is the one who uh, is quote unquote in charge of the disposition of the publication. And so uh, starting with them at this point in our uh, 
project seemed like uh, a good way to go uh, because we are collecting this information for the purpose of contacting the author uh, for um, permission or notification. And so we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, but this uh, block of code here basically uh, collects that information about the authors. And so then I get uh, this spreadsheet, I save it out, and I have this sort of version of the spreadsheet which has uh, all of our article data, the DOIs, titles, uh, some information about the funding body, uh, here's our uh, corresponding author fields, and um, the data that has been uh, added as well. So these are our unpaywall fields, best OA URL for PDF, best OA version. Uh, and then at this stage uh, where I have it exported to a spreadsheet uh, for purposes of contacting these authors, one other thing that I wanted to do was include the subject librarians in there. Uh, so for each of the departments in the that appear in the corresponding uh, department field, uh, I've created a list of the email addresses uh, and the, the subject librarian associated with those fields. Uh, and then I do a uh, an index match process here uh, to um, match the department name with the corresponding librarian. And once that match is made, uh, I've created a, a mail merge template essentially that uh, allows us to send customized emails to the authors uh, describing their article, congratulations, uh, and then some sort of um, either a notification or an ask of some sort. And we can sign it. Um, I sign it with my name and then we can add the, their subject librarian in there too, uh, in case they're familiar with their librarian or uh, especially if they're not familiar with their subject librarian. And so this particular template, this is where we started with this process. If an article is already available open access with a suitable uh, Creative Commons license that allows us to uh, that allows us to repost th that article under that license. Uh, we send them an email. Uh, the, again, the corresponding author for the paper. It says, "Congratulations on your publication. Uh, according to our records." this is available open access and uh, we can post it if you don't want us to let us know and uh, so far out of uh, a few hundred articles that we've done this and and sent uh, emails out about uh, i've gotten only a few responses back uh, and they've been very positive yeah i'm all for this go ahead and do it and so we've not had anybody opt out a lot more of these to send, so I'm prepared. But uh, once we connect this uh, to the spreadsheet, then we see that uh, you know we actually are filling in information. At this point in the process, I have the spreadsheet combined with all of this information, and so we can start taking a look at our visualizations. And so using something like Tableau, Google Data Studio, uh, Microsoft Power BI, uh, all of them work. I've tried all of them. Uh, and for now I can, uh, I'll just show the, the Tableau workshop, but we can uh, start breaking down our publications in our data set by how many are closed, how many are closed, but potential uh, open access in MoSpace. And so that is where the potential OA flag that that I generated and added. Uh, and then which kind of open access is available and which version. So we have got green submitted version, accepted, published, uh, hybrid, accepted, hybrid, published, gold, and bronze. 
And you can also, uh, you know, in Tableau or uh, Google Data Studio, you can do some sort of, uh, you can set up some sort of, you know, click through uh, navigation. And so we'll see in just a minute a sort of combined table. Uh, but one thing that we might also want to look at is OA availability by publisher. And so we can see sort of how much our authors are publishing under certain publishers and then how much of it is OA and again what type of uh, open access. Uh, we might also want to look at our corresponding authors and see uh, what uh, departments are uh, publishing the most in, the, in this set of publications. And so uh, and how many are open access. And so we can view different kinds of uh, sorts on these as well. Uh, and we can set up different dashboards for uh, different information. And so right here we could say, I want to see all of our green open access through Elsevier. And we click on that in the chart and we actually have a list of all of the articles here. The visualizations are sometimes useful for us, and we've actually used them in uh, our own internal discussions about uh, publishing agreements or subscription deals. Uh, and more and more, we're able to take this kind of information and uh, make arguments about uh, whether we want some sort of open access clause included in a particular publisher's contract. And finally, one other thing that we're able to do with this data set, uh, we have the spreadsheet and from uh, Unpaywall, we have direct PDF links uh, when available. Uh, otherwise, we have links uh, otherwise to the best OA version. And so if I go back to my Jupyter Notebook, uh, my third process is to actually retrieve the open access articles. So like I said before, where we have articles uh, and we're sending out those emails that congratulations you've published an article uh, according to our records it's available open access and we would like to include it in our repository uh, what i'm able to do is uh, first of all uh, go through and uh, uh, make that sort of a license judgment based on again unpaywalls uh, best OA evidence, best OA license. And so I can uh, go through those records and build XML blocks. And what this block of code does here is uh, builds a block with a citation and builds the XML that I can output and uh, import uh, directly into a, a DSpace batch job. Uh, that looks like this. And then finally, uh, there's the get articles step function that for those direct PDF links, we'll actually go and, and uh, download the PDFs directly or uh, lo actually launch a browser page. So some publishers don't allow a robot or a spider. Uh, they don't appreciate uh, being connected to that way. So uh, I save those to a list and we can download those manually if we need to. So this is our current process and pipeline, which uh, evolved definitely from basically downloading data from Scopus to uh, throw into some sort of visualization tool. Um, we added that with Unpaywall, then started uh, gathering other information uh, and eventually culminating in uh, collecting articles and creating uh, batch metadata for DSpace. Uh, future improvements that, that seem obvious. Uh, I have a lot of refining to do to, to make this uh, more repeatable. And so right now we've got um, <clears throat> the initial step of uh, downloading CSVs from Scopus. And uh, so I'm working a little with uh, automating this collection with uh, the Scopus API that's available instead of the spreadsheet. Uh, the upside to the spreadsheet is that when the spreadsheet is the input, uh, we could do some further um, merging of information before the initial step. And so specifically, I'm thinking about 
uh, we have access to web of science. We have access to academic analytics. And you know, if I wanted to do this sort of unpaywall contact information and th and those steps, um, I might do some some processing to to merge additional data, essentially into a CSV <laughs> for the DOI list that goes into this spreadsheet. Uh, but overall, there are a lot of kind of moving parts here and um, um, refining the, the process so that it's uh, repeatable without um, too much tinkering is, is a priority. Uh, and part of this also uh, involves saving data to a database uh, to, to make it easier to check for uh, duplication, uh, merge those additional data sources, and then cache author information. So uh, I don't have to uh, do the LDAP lookup every time. And then I also think that caching author information and maybe saving the Scopus IDs for authors, uh, which is also part of their Scopus data set, will do things like allow me to expand to uh, contact in situations where the MU author is not necessarily the corresponding author, but we still want to include those papers. And so expanding out that way might allow me to be able to match those authors with um, our own internal database. And all of this data is starting from Scopus and Unpaywall and our campus directory. And um, there may be additional better data sources, better ways to connect to these data sources. And um, I'm on the lookout for those. And uh, we also want to contact. So, so far we've been doing the email contact for articles that are OA that we can uh, uh, ingest automatically into our repository by doing this uh, PDF harvest and, and batch XML for DSpace. Um, but uh, Share Your Paper just launched, which is uh, an interesting tool that will allow us to uh, just include a URL in the email that um, will allow them to, again, basically set up an, an automated process of selecting their manuscript file and adding it to the depository in a correct way, adding it to our repository in a correct way. Uh, that automates, again, a lot of the metadata process for those um, articles. Uh, here's my GitHub link uh, as it is currently. And so the Jupyter Notebooks will be there and a readme file uh, sort of discussing what's going on and how to use it. So uh, thank you and feel free to uh, let me know, uh, send me a note if you have any um, questions or comments or um, thoughts that might make uh, my life easier if you're interested in this project. I'd appreciate hearing from you. Thank you.